First of all, welcome to everyone on behalf of the Women's Liberation Front um, to today's panel event. So we're very honored to host our speakers today who are fighting for women's rights in South Korea, where in recent years, the feminist movement has flourished and where women face many barriers, including an epidemic of molka or spy cam pornography, as well as intense pressure to conform to restrictive beauty standards that often results in young girls getting cosmetic surgery and a sex industry that is so normalized, even celebrities and politicians take part in or run prostitution rings themselves. However, women in Korea have mobilized to fight against these intense forms of misogyny and have become known around the world for their courage. Our panelists today are Ji Hae-gook, Ji uh, Hae-gook, Taegyung Kim, Hae Jung Park, and Hae Bin Shin will be assisting with translation. Hae Bin translated Pornland by Gail Dines, and interpreted for Sheila Jeffries during her book tour in Korea. First, we will hear from Ji Hae Guk, who is the director of Yolda Books, a radical feminist publisher in South Korea. She has been an active feminist campaigner online and offline since 2015. In 2019, after the publication of the Korean translation of Sheila Jeffries' book, Gender Hurts, she organized a book tour and lecture series in three cities across South Korea. Jihei will be speaking about organizing strategies used within the Korean feminist movement in a talk that will only be available during this live stream. Okay, so now we're gonna hear from Jihei. Uh, thank you, Jihei, that was wonderful. Um, really nice to hear about the importance of women-only spaces and organizing. Um, seeing lots of wonderful comments here. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, next, we're gonna go to Taegyung Kim. Um, Taegyung will discuss digital sexual violence. Taegyung works with the volunteer group Stop Digital Sexual Violence, NAMU Rights, as a member of a social network team that promotes support for victims and changes social perceptions. Previously, Taegyung worked as an organizer for a radical feminist group at Sungshin Women's University. Taegyung will address the challenges of confronting sexual exploitation and women's fight against spy cam porn and digital sexual abuse. Okay, so now let's turn it over to Taegyung. Hello, I am Taegyung Kim. I am very pleasured to meet you all here. Seoul, Korea is 6.20, early morning, but I am here with full of energy because of this grateful chance to share some interesting information to sisters from the whole world. Okay, according to Korean Supreme Prosecutor's Office report, there is an increasing sex offense from 2013. Is this type of sex crimes is called photographing, illegal photographing using mobile phone and micro camera without consent. This crime is the backbone of digital sexual crime that appeared along with the technological advance. At the same period, the radical feminists have resisted at the front to be considered the sexual exploitation using cameras as a serious sexual offense. So what I prepared for today webinar is the counter strategies of radical feminists against digital sex crime in South Korea. I'm going to briefly describe Korean society around digital sex crime and then explain the noticeable counter strategies of rad radical feminists based on two prominent cases. Before beginning, I want to make sure the meaning of mulka, which is used often in foreign press. Mulka is a photographing the body of a person who may cause sexual desire or shame using a camera or micro camera or other mechanical device with similar functions against the will of the photograph. Will the will of the photograph no um, against the will of the person who in that photographing or the photo. Um, as you already know, the Korean government does not allow uh, pornography. All legal ways to access websites of sexual exploited videos like Pornhub are blocked by the government. But at the same time, as you already expect, due to Korean men's 
harmful desire to rape women indirectly or directly, many obscene materials are illegally circulated and digital sexual exploitation are committed instead. But before this work came, there was a society with the website which was named Soranet. Soranet was an illegal pornographic website that shared sexual exploitation videos and photos, discussed the rape plots and trafficking of minors. It had more than a million members, a million Korean men, and has, has, been, deep, has been deeply around Korean society for more than 15 years since 1999 with a server from foreign country. The website was finally repealed in 2016 by Begalia, um, the online community of radical feminists, which Ji Cook already mentioned. In the process of Megalia members for to abolish Soranet, we could find some children stretches from radical feminists against digital sex, sex exploitation. Just to briefly recap, their strategy could be called reputation of traces and making publicized the true face of Soranet and data of Soranet users. On Twitter, they made an account Soranet Tani. It can be translated in English, you are Soranet user. They uploaded at the account what they found through tracking a Soranet users via, via Twitter. What Chaser uploaded was mostly personal information of Soranet users that those perverts left their information for engaging group of rape, rapes, for engaging group rapes or for exploiting young teenagers. Or they left a comment, you are a Soranet user, aren't you? At anonymous accounts, which had any marks that he explo they exploited women through Soranet. At the same time, they publicize to citizens these realities continuously and even hand over in information to police about the sexual predators they found. This led to the emergence of public opinion for the abolition of Soranet, the website of pornography. And there was a fundraising campaign inside Megalia to abolish the distorted sexuality field website was sent to the office. Yeah, the money was sent to the office of female lawmaker who was insisting on the abolition of Soranet. At the end, in April 2016, the website disappeared from our society. After the end of Soranet, the Red Fan based private group, which had been tracking and accusing digital sex crimes, had a significant impact on the to non-governmental organizations. Korean Cyber Sexual Violence Response Center and DSO, Digital Sex Crime Out, that aligned with victims of sexual violence also accused and tracked assailant. As we will expect, however, there were also and always very chronic problems at the end of the process in those kind of incidents. Especially in sex crimes, South Korea judges most of its perpetrators not guilty or imposes very relatively low fines. Among the Soranet operators, only one of them was found guilty and sentenced to only four years. But through these efforts of the radical feminists, the issue of illegal filmed and distributed women's body had, came out, had come out to the surface of our society. From then on, the second prominent case was happened after one irrational judgment toward a woman suspect. It was an incident in which a female model in a class at one university filmed a part of another male model's body and uploaded it in online without seeking consent. In other words, it was just the same crime which men have committed countless times against women and women's body for more than two decades. Ironically, as a man became a victim, the pace of the investigation into same crime accelerated and public opinion against the assailant increased, eventually imposing a 10 month sentence on that woman. To counter this unfair situation, the feminists took a similar approach as they had pre previously chosen. 
They wrote petitions, tried to obtain trials, and carried out hashtag campaigns for diffusing the reality of digital sex crime. Then some suggested that they should hold a protest that had never been in Korea history. The name of the protest is Pripyonan Yungi, the uncomfortable courage. Um, it was Jia Kuk um, had also mentioned this protest. The demonstration was to denounce a digital sexual abuse and biased investigations depends on sex and to illegal filming. Here, what radical feminists chose as a new strategy was a gathering numerous anonymous women online, in online. The protests were flooded six times in 2018, totally about 300,000 women get involved in it for seven months. This is a picture of the protest. There are three main aspects at the stream of anger-filled streets in Seoul, Korea. First, they targeted on only one single agenda, digital sex crime. Second, they did not ask for solidarity toward any movement organizations. The only, the only solidarity that exi existed in the whole process of the demonstrations was a slack un unification, unific unification between anonymous young women. So the management for the whole movements during seven months could be remained flexible. In, in each six times demonstration, whole members of staffs were changed into new members for mobile diver diversion between promoters and participants. In the open progress of a previous participants being a current staff have been reflected various feedback from the last protest. Third, the anonymous women who participated to the demonstration have addressed statements at every single protest, suggesting specific amendments in current poli policy, policy and legislation on digital sexual violence. All those results were from the effort, the effort of radical feminists in line who had paved the way for actualizing the protest. In the in the progress method. In the progress method that the demonstrations were organized throughout the online on a large scale, can we find several meaningful modes which radical feminists have chosen? They made, an, they made a website for meditating all opinions or, and for an announcement of demonstrations. Through the online survey, through the open online survey, the day and location was first protest was decided. 12,000 women answered at the survey and 8,000 women said yes to participate. Naturally, to make it easy to join the protest from province, they have rented buses classified by cities. At the same time, steps for various fields were recruited. In the progress of recruiting steps, should applicants prove that she is a biological woman? The way to prove their sex is not open to public, but previously we used to take a method checking voice, ID card, and Adam's apple via in an instant via an instant messaging. Also, a number of anonymous women women donated at the official bank account of the protest. Of course, all the uses of supporting money was open to public, each end of the demonstration transparently. We already experienced so many times that there are far too many cooks pulling the broth to prevent the, the, the chaos. As mentioned above, we, we focused on only a single agenda, the digital sex crime that corner women into a deadly situation every day. Therewith, there were rules that every participant should follow. First, only biological women can enter every demonstration. With the ground rule, checked the staff, um, the staff of demonstration checked the ID cards of whole participants when they enter the protest. Second, in this homepage, only about the ag agenda can be discussed. Even political issues are also not allowed if they have no connection with the agenda. The same rules 
were applied to pickets at the demonstration. Third, in the same vein of rule two, um, second rule, using, um, using a particular expression like internet slang can be shown one's political interest, not about the agent that was forbidden. To fix these conditions as a main rule of demonstration, a, num a number of radical feminists said it sacrificed themselves to persu persuade not non-radical feminist women with friendly words. In this way, also could radical feminists spread their thoughts and idea to many of the non-radical very naturally and also very peacefully. While open the while open and detailed discussion and rules notifications oscillated in online in offline, each university's radical feminist club, mainly women's universities, promoted the seriousness of digital sexual crimes and encouraged the other students to go to demonstration together. The member of this class posted their reviews of the sisters' solidarity they experienced on the street after each round of protests on a website only for students of the universities. For the rest, in daily life, they took we took the solidarity further also at public restrooms by putting the stickers on the suspected holes for micro camera. So then online and offline have emerged con concurrent concurrently as a place of women's solidarity beyond one personal background. How the demonstration, Pripyonan Yonggi, or the uncomfortable courage changed our, our society is as follows. It led to a shift in social perception, such as the creation of the public service announcement on digital sexual violence that recognizes illegal filming or illegal photographing as serious sex, sex crimes. In addition, the intensified act on the punishment of digital sexual violence has been revised. The amendment included not only illegal photographs, but also contents that copied illegal photographs as punishment. And if they were distributed for profit, the renewed fine is up to seven years in prison. Furthermore, even if the person in photographs agreed at the time of filming, distributed, distributing it without seeking consent afterwards would also result in up to five years in prison or a fine up to 30 million won. In the end, throughout the entire process of this, and this demonstration, many contemporary women discovered what they have to fight for and learn how to, how to counter noxious men's solidarity. With this, I'm going to finish my session. I hope my presentation will be helpful for someone. If you have any questions after the webinar, you can send them to my email anytime and I will answer you back gladly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tae Young. That was very informative and wonderful results from the protest. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, next, we'll hear from Hye Jung Park. Hye Jung worked with victims of prostitution in South Korea for 10 years. Now as a master's candidate at a women's studies program in Seoul, she's doing research on the newly emergent radical feminist movement. She also published a book on sexual exploitation in Korean in 2020. Hye Jung will discuss the Remove the Corset or Tal Corset movement among South Korean women who are increasingly rejecting the strict beauty standards in a country that's called the plastic surgery capital of the world. Okay, Hye Jung, are you ready? Yes. Uh, hello, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so I'd like to talk about South Korea's Thai Corset movement today. This movement emerged in 2017 in South Korea and gained momentum in 2018. It is still a powerful movement affecting a lot of women's politics and changing their, their daily lives. First, I'd like to address what is unique about the Thai Corset movement and then explain 
the development process of the movement. I hope this presentation gives women in other countries inspirations and ideas that help them create their own Thai movement. First, what is the Thai Khorosan movement? The word Thai in Thai Khorosan means taking up close or breaking away from something. And corset represents sexist social customs like femininity and beauty practices imposed on women. While many Thai corset participants focus their campaign on rejecting beauty practices such as makeup, dieting, uh, wearing skirts or long hair, some women go further and seek to abandon inner corsets such as feminine speech tone or feminine body postures. To give you an idea of what Thai corset entails, I'd like to show you the result of transformation that women go through with this movement. These are photos of mine. Before and after I joined the Thai corset movement, but my transformation is not that drastic because I stopped wearing makeup way before this campaign. So I asked other sisters for their own pictures. Uh, these are Taegyung's photos, uh, Taegyung, the previous um, presenter, panelist. And these are Jihae's. Mm. And this person is one of our colleagues at Yolda Books. As you can see, women go through radical personal changes with this movement. Can you believe these are the same person? <laughs> the first characteristic I want to point out is that it is not an isolated movement. It emerged from the radical feminist movement that began in 2015. Most Thai participants advocate for the 4 big movement, which is about rejecting intimate relationships with men. The emergence of Thai movement was also, company, uh, also accompanied by the vigorous campaigns against male violence, especially spy cam, that were largely ignored in the society in the past. Growing feminist understanding of men loving and male violence affected the Thai Khorosan movement. It is not a coincidence that this movement emerged at around the same time. The second characteristic is that although it is a radical movement that rejects performing beauty practices altogether, it is a mass scale movement that are bringing about unprecedented social changes. Reports say that purchases of cosmetics, hair products, and other beauty products by women in their 20s significantly declined. There are, al there are also emerged new clothing brands such as Fuse Soul that focus on producing genderless quality clothing for women. Statistics show that 56% of Korean women in their 20s support the Thai movement and it's becoming the standard for being a real feminist these days. Then how did this radical movement become popular among young women? Let's see the development process of the movement. As many of you already know, our new wave of radical feminist movement emerged in 2015 through a women-only website called Megalia. These women had enough with enduring or ignoring prevalent online women hating. And they started attacking men online using parody tactics called mirroring. They are militant in their tactics and blatant in their language. They don't mind some political incorrectness when they criticize men. They don't hesitate to publicly mock men and they openly celebrate deaths of sexual abusers when they commit suicide due to mutual allegations. Their basic stance was that we are men haters 
and their organizing tactic was women only. This opened a space where women can share their personal lives and analyze them together from feminist perspectives. And this environment facilitated collective online consciousness raising. When discussing personal lives as a woman, beauty practice was one of the central topics from the beginning. The word corset was adopted to examine patriarchal oppressive norms in the beginning stage of Megalia in 2015. Women created online materials about the corset based on their discussions in Megalia and shared these texts and images on SNS platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. Discussions on what constitutes corset continued throughout 2016 but when it came to whether to actually take it off, women's opinions varied. Some said that no one should tell women what to do or censure other women's behaviors. Some argued that women can, in some cases, do beauty practices for self-satisfaction. Also, untraditional applications of makeup, such as bold, smoky eye makeup, were defended by some women as rebellious act against social norms that dictate women to look docile. In response to these oppositions, women stressed that individual women's desires for or satisfaction from beauty practice should be interpreted in the context of social structure and expectations imposed on women based on sex. For example, this material shows a list of lists of criteria to be considered a fashionable man. Men who meet some of these criteria are not considered a average, average Korean man. But anyone can see that average woman does way more than these practices. Expectations on beauty practices are differently experienced according to sex. Against the argument that some beauty practices can be feminist, women pointed out that beauty practices should be viewed from the entire women's interest, not just from some groups of women. For example, in Korea, it is unusual for middle-aged women have to have long um, dyed yellow hair because older women are expected to have neat, shorter black hair. But long hair cannot be just justified for being liberating for middle-aged women because young girls are getting tremendous social pressures to keep long hair. Some stressed that adult women's beauty practices influence young girls. Many teenage girls learn makeup skills by watching YouTube beauty tutorials and little girls watch their mothers and female teachers around them and come to think that a woman is a thing to be made up and seen. Adult female friends also subconsciously monitor each other's appearance and learn beauty practice from each other. This realization that one's beauty practice can reinforce other women's beauty practice is often expressed as tightening others' corsets. And discussions on transgenderism affected how women saw corsets. In 2016, many women abandoned Megalia because the owner of the website banned its users from using derogatory terms about gay men. Women set up a new website called WOMED. In WOMED, women started analyzing cross-dressing men's behaviors. They sneaked in uh, cross-dressers' online communities and shared what they found there in WOMED. Cross-dressers do all kinds of bizarre things to look like a woman, 
And some of these practices, like makeup and high heels, are the same practices women do. Women realize that being a woman is not the same with wearing feminized clothes. Women are feminized by beauty practices. Of course, crest dressers wear feminized clothes to enjoy masochistic sexual feelings from wearing inferior sex classes uh, attire, whereas women are culturally forced to wear those. But seeing cross-dressers beauty practice helped women recognize how artificial they are and reach to the conclusion that corset is something we can actually take off. Some movement participants jokingly say that they pulled off escaping from the corset thanks to these cross-dressers. After these online discussions, Women concluded that femininity is a marker of women's inferior social status, and beauty practice is a mechanism that renders women dolls, turning women into things and commodities. And beauty practice serves the sexual objectification of women. Women decided that we need to reject femininity by casting off beauty practice altogether. Participants of the movement use the word default to describe the state of not performing socially imposed femininity. This pursuit of default state manifests in expressions you will use, such as protein hijab, meaning long hair, and feminize oneself, which is used when a woman wears makeup or feminized clothes. Now, women started doing experiments in earnest to take up the corset. One of the most radical women-only feminist community at the time functions as a power plant that pushes women toward more radical actions. The website banned its members from uploading posts that displaying them wearing corset and sent postings that contained experiences of Thai corset to a special bulletin board that listed most popular postings. So these postings are exposed to more women. In this stage, some women started posting their Thai corset experiences on Twitter with tips on how to get a proper haircut. We met Walmart and Twitter for both anonymity based social platforms, and women posted this Thai corset engine in which they showed proof of having taken off the corset without fully, without fully disclosing their faces. For example, posting a picture of um, smashed, destroyed backup tools were their short hair in profile. And then in May 2018, South Korea witnessed the largest women's rally against male violence named the courage to be uncomfortable. The same rally, the two panelists mentioned. The first rally brought um, 12,000 women to the streets in Seoul. Afterwards, this women-only rally was held almost every month, ending in December at the sixth rally with 350,000 accumulated, accumulated participants in total. Chartered buses arrived at the rally with women from southern half of the Korean Peninsula. And the women-only policy was so strict that even male reporters were not allowed inside the rally barricades. The sheer number of participants and the fact that it was organized entirely by anonymous average women online shocked the nation. These rallies in 2018 offered young Korean women who in general became feminist after the emergence of the online discussion group Megalia, 
on the on opportunity to gather and express their anger toward male domination and meet like-minded feminists face to face. Many women confessed they were surprised and deeply impressed to see in person women who had actually taken up the corset. The rally had the head shave event in which women got their heads shaved on stage and gave speeches on their thoughts on the corset and male violence. I'd like you to watch a short video of this to feel the energy of the rally and listen to what women say. Um, give me a second. Yeah, this is a video of the head shape event. I play the video. 머리카락을 자른 시기로 결심하신 이유가 있을까요? Can you hear the sound? Okay. 성님들, 우리는 태어날 때부터 머리가 긴 장모형이 아닙니다. 머리를 왜 자르냐가 아니라 머리를 불편하게 왜 기르냐가 질문의 지보, 기본형이어야 합니다. 고민모동은 남자 나라! 시위를 준비하며 시를 쓰셨다고 했는데 여기서 낭송해 주실 수 있을까요? 일단 제가 저를 자르면서 소감을 먼저 말씀하고 해보겠습니다. 저는 전문직이지만 여초라서인지 서비스직과 다름이 없는 과를 다닙니다. 오늘 과외에서 이래가 없이 저는 머리에 바리깡을 댔지만 하나도 좆되지 않을 겁니다. 저는 쿠덕이었고 화장을 한 예쁜 내 모습이 좋았습니다. 제 친구들도 예쁜 제 모습을 좋아했습니다. 부수적인 어머니 밑에서 꿈을 자유를 쟁취를 생각했습니다. 당당하게 집 앞에서 놀 때도 늘 풀메이크업을 했고 하루에 달걀 두 개, 사과 한개 먹으면 다이어트를 했습니다. 저는 제 민낯이 부끄러웠습니다. 민낯과 화장한 게 정말 차이가 없어 보일 친구들도 민낯인 날에는 마스크를 쓴거 들고 등교했기 때문입니다. 하지만 이제 저는 변하고자 합니다. 머리를 자르고 화장을 벗은 제게 단발은 싫지만 화장을 취직하면 늘할 테니 그만둬도 다행이라는 어머니의 말은 저에게서 꿈의 자유를 뺏은 게 아니었습니다. 오늘 머리를 자르고 편하게 다니더라도 실습을 나가고 취업을 준비할 때 저는 서비스직이라 또 먹고 살기 위해서란 이유로 허상의 여성상을 꾸며내야 할지 모릅니다. 그러나 지금 이 순간 저는 제가 자매님들과 저를 위해 할수 있는 모든 걸 하고 싶습니다. 저를 보고 단발로 자르고 당당히 자연 얼굴로 등교하는 친구들은 그 어때보다 당 편해 보였기 때문입니다. 내가 바뀌면 적어도 나를 둘러싼 세상은 변합니다. 저는 30살이 지나도 구름이, 주름이 짙게 져도 예쁘지 않아도 죽지 않을 겁니다. 마지막으로 제가 태어나 간첫 시인은 삼천... I'll skip a little. It's quite moving, isn't it? I go back to the presentation.
Yes. As the rallies progressed in 2018, more women started showing up at the protests with short hair and no makeup. Many women confessed online that they took up their corset after attending one of the rallies. Seeing other t a e k o s e sisters made them think that there are actually many women who cut their hair short and it, it is okay to live with short hair. Then why can't I do that too? One of my interviewees said that after impulsively cut her hair short to join the t a e k o s e project, she got her hair Uh, extensions. She was living far from Seoul and there were no t a e k o s e participants uh, around her. She felt isolated and depressed, but when she came to Seoul to attend one of the rallies and saw many women with short hair and the head shape you know, event, it deeply moved her. After that, she never went back to the wearing corset. She attended the rallies every time she had a chance. Many women shared similar experiences and sentiments about their t a l corset practice and rally uh, participation. Around this time, YouTube channels about t a l corset movement started to appear and became very popular with their subscribers rapidly accumulating day by day. Emergence of YouTube channels on t a e k o r s e t is especially significant because contrary to the t a e k o r s e t i n j e n g postings on w a m a t or Twitter, YouTubers openly and more confidently started uh, speaking about the t a e k o r s e t movement exposing their faces and lives outside the computer. In the same period, t a e k o r s e t i n j e u n g postings on Instagram increased rapidly. Considering that Instagram is known to focus on sharing users' photos and videos, this phenomenon also shows that more women started practicing t a e k o r s e t in their real life and became more confident uh, sharing the experience with others. As the movement grows and more women join the t a e k o r s e t movement, there emerged new cultural contents for these women online and offline. An entertainment YouTube channel appeared. They aim to produce entertainment contents for women that does not objectify women. Women only club parties and art exhibitions were held, often held as usual as well. t a e k o r s e movement is a valuable case where a radical feminist movement that aims to abolish gender, which is corset, gained much response and participation from the general female public. What I have learned about this movement is that feminism needs women-only spaces for discussions online and offline. And it, it is when we share and analyze women's experiences without constraints of right or left ideologies or political correctness that the movement can be radicalized. t a e k o r s e t movement shows that when the number of women free from corset increases and they can see and meet each other, the number of new women joining the movement can rise quite fast. Some, uh, South Korea benefited from the fact that women separate online spaces existed previously, and we have high level of universal internet connection. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to the Q&A session now, and we have some questions. Um, just give me one moment. Okay, so our first question 
is from someone in the UK. Why do you think Korean feminists are more radical than Western feminists in rejecting feminine stereotypes, particularly in adopting short hair and rejecting makeup? It would be great to know how we can make that happen in the UK. Um, Hejeon, would you like to answer that one? Uh, yeah, I think I answered this question uh, during the presentation. Uh, I think um, having women only discussions on beauty practice is the first uh, stage to create the movement. And, and then we can uh, share the experience offline and online. Um, uh, I think the engine uh, tactics in which women shared Thai experience online with hashtags on Instagram, Facebook, and any social media was uh, very, uh, it's very useful and effective. So they can be used. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so this next question is about women's only spaces. So um, of course, it's very important to have spaces for women to organize as everyone's mentioned today, especially on social media, but how about spaces um, in real life? So how, what kinds of spaces do women have in Korea in, offline. Um, uh, Taegyung, would you like to answer this one? Yeah. I think my answer can be, can be answered first question or so. So in the physical space, in the real life, there are women's only pubs, cafes, which have been created from 2019, and radical feminist clubs in high schools, girls' high school and universities also can be here included. And the various regional networks of unmarried women have been created based on online, but it, it is they are existed in real life also. Also, there are a few, a few economic networks of unmarried women to share tips how to, um, how to increase they, their property. Some of online networks set their site, set their site on created women only district for living in the future. However, before then there were already some women's only spaces. What I what I want to cite as a good example are single sex school and girls only class. Generally, there are girls' middle schools, girls' high school and women's universities and colleges. In those education in institutes, the students can remain just as a student, not girl or woman. It means they can experience the life as a default human and being treated, being treated as a default human. Of course, there are men's educators in there, but still in those girls only and women's women only spaces, they can also discuss about any issues without interruption of boys or men. Also, they can share their experience. For the good example, the women's university where I am graduating um, has a building only for women. Even male professors cannot use the building. And from that building already three radical feminist clubs have, have launched it. As of right now, 424 girls high schools and 14 women's universities and colleges exist, exist in South Korea. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, wow, that's really impressive. Did you say 14? 14 universities? Yeah, 14 women's wow. universities and colleges and 424 girls high schools. A couple of questions here about infighting or divisive issues. So can you speak about some of the more divisive issues among feminists and kind of how that gets handled? 
그 전체 페미니스트 전체 운동으로 보면은 트랜스젠더리즘 문제가 가장 그 판이 갈린 문제라고 볼수 있고 사실은 그거는 이제 기성 세대와의 그 토론이 계속되고 있고요. 그리고 어 레디컬 페미니스트들 사이에서는 가장 의견이 갈렸던 문제는 탈코르의 문제였다고 처음에는 어 생각을 합니다. 그래서 트랜스젠더리즘에 동의를 다 하고 트랜스젠더와 그 어떤 남성 정치와 싸우는 사람들 중에서도 코르셋을 벗냐 안 벗냐 혹은 이 코르셋이 여성의 표현의 자유냐 아니냐에서는 의견이 굉장히 많이 갈렸습니다. 그리고 나중에는 그 사비 운동이라고 하는 게 굉장히 커지면서 어 기혼 어과 비혼 관련된 그 논쟁이 커지기도 했습니다. 그래서 저는 어떤 주제로 의견이 갈렸는지 보다 더 중요한 거는 의견이 갈릴 때 페미니스트들이 어떻게 대응을 했는지가 훨씬 더 중요하다고 생각해서 그 부분을 조금 더 말씀드리고 싶습니다. 어, 처음에 그 로리타 논쟁 그 어, 아동 성적 대상화 관련된 논쟁이 터졌을 때 어, 페이스북에서는 많은 페미니스트들이 이렇게 처음에는 조금 논쟁이 시작되다가도 어느 순간이 되면 적당한 곳에서 아네 의견은 그렇니 내 의견은 이래 하고 타협하는 과정들이 있었는데 어, 같은 논쟁이 워마드에 갔을 때는 완전히 여자들만 모인 그룹이었고 그래서 그 워마드 안에서는 아주 격렬하게 끝까지 싸우고 어떤 논쟁이 심해지더라도 끝까지 가는 경향이 있었습니다. 그래서 사실은 페이스북은 남자들이 굉장히 많이 있는 공간이고 어또 정치적인 올바름이라고 하는 어떤 기준이 작용, 작동하는 공간이고 그에 비해서 워마드는 여자들만 모여 있고 어, 그 다음에 여성적인 말하기라고 하는 좀더뭐 친절하고 배려하고 이런 말하기를 하지 않아도 되는 공간이었기 때문에 어, 여자만 모인 공간이 운동의 급진성을 확보하는데 되게 중요했다고 다시 한번 강조를 하고 싶고 어, 한번 논쟁이 터졌을 때 여성들이 양보하지 않고 싸우는 게 짧게는 한 2, 3일에서 길게는 일주일 이상 열흘까지도 논쟁이 지속되기도 했습니다. 그래서 어. 내가 이렇게 하다가 운동판이 깨져서 우리가 소수가 되면 어떡하지? 뭐 페미니즘 운동이 다 어, 사라지면 어떡하지? 이런 생각을 한게 아니라 싸워서 이기는 게 운동이 판이 더 커지는 거다. 우리가 확실한 어떤 우리만의 그 가치관을 세우는 게 원칙을 세우는 게더 중요하다라고 하는 거에 우리가 모두 동의를 했기 때문에 어, 지금과 같은 확장이 가능했다. 그래서 당장 어, 운동 사람들과 갈라지지 않는 것보다는 좀 싸움이 일어나더라도 끝까지 싸워서 페미니즘의 원칙을 만드는 게더 중요하다고 생각을 합니다. 그리고 이런 논쟁들 사이에 실제로는 감정이 상하거나 서로 싸우거나 뭐 차단하거나 서로 안 보거나 이렇게 갈라진 경우도 있지만 이제 결과적으로는 페미니즘 운동 전체가 굉장히 크게 확장이 됐고 그 과정에서 모두가 각자 자기 위치에서 활동할 수 있는 그런 자리들이 더 많이 생겼다고 생각을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 의견이 어떤 것으로 갈리든지 그것이 중요한 것이 아니라 어, 우리가 어떤 그 태도로 이 페미니즘 운동에 참여할 것인가 여기에 대한 원칙을 세우는 게 중요하다고 강조하고 싶습니다. 네. 음. So, uh, of course, in the entire feminist circles, the transgenderism issue uh, was the was the subject and the, and the topic that made us most divisive. But, uh, and we had a uh, heated debate with established feminists and it's uh, still ongoing. Uh, and within the red feminist circles, we uh, had the fiercest debates with Thai corset uh, issues, the escape the corset movement, uh, because even uh, some uh, gender critical feminists uh, agreed with uh, the transgenderism stance that we have, but they, most of them, many of them didn't accept the concept or the practice of Thai corset movement because they thought it is, uh, it is, it's empowering and it's, uh, it should, we should be uh, free to choose what we want. So 
And another thing was about uh, 4B movement. Uh, as the 4B movement grow, uh, the conflict between married women and unmarried women uh, came to be kind of severe. And uh, I believe uh, it is important to talk about what we, how we handled uh, that debate that what made me uh, that made us divisive. Uh, first, uh, for example, when we had uh, sexual, uh, we, when we had debates and uh, controversies over sexual object objectification on of children in Facebook, uh, we sort of uh, wanted to compromise because we felt we. Uh, should be politically correct, and we should uh, respect diversities. And we had so many male users in Facebook and so on. But in the women-only uh, online forum Walmart, uh, when uh, there were only women, so we had we were able to have uh, fierce debates anonymously. With each other, and the same goes went for the Facebook secret groups, uh, were uh, women only, but we uh, went by our re uh, our real name. But anyway, and uh, so we had debates that uh, went on two or three days. And sometimes we had uh, like 10 day long debates and we worried about like, um, we, of course we worried if, uh, if those debates uh, made us even more like fissures between us. And we worried about our conflicts, but we came to uh, realize that uh, even though we fight each other uh, with other feminists, but we have to win this battle and it will only make our movement bigger and bigger. So we had to risk fighting to set our principles within the movement so we can expand our movement further. And well, of course we hurt feelings with each other and we block the accounts with each other, but in the end, uh, our strategies proved uh, successful because feminist movement uh, has grown since then. And in the end, we created more spaces for each other to be active in their own space. So, um, so I think we issue uh, we should focus more on uh, how we handle those conflict situations that make. Uh, that, that divided us. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's, uh, I think, really interesting and important for women to be able to debate among each other and even work out those kinds of issues together. So, yeah, um, I have, we're getting lots of questions right now. Um, I have a question here about the role of lesbians in organizing and in the feminist movement in Korea. Um, so, Hejung, can you can you speak to that? Uh, yes. Um, so, I as I said earlier, through online consciousness raising, women concluded that uh, women have different interests than men do, and Men are men are our enemies, and we need to get the men out. <laughs> so uh, uh, this consensus uh, led to the four B movement, the rejection of uh, intimate relationships or sexual relationship with men. So the criticism of against men lobbying was the one of the main topics of discussions among Megalia and Womad. Uh, but lesbianism 
was not considered as a uh, positive alternative then because uh, lesbianism was already tainted, framed as, a, uh, as an identity that one has to be born with by queer politics. So rather than lesbianism, no marriage uh, became um, the main um, argument and tactic uh, of the, this movement against men loving. And women have discussed a lot of uh, ways uh, to uh, uh, that women can live independently from men. So, yeah. But in reality, as women um, re reorient, reorient their energy and affection towards other women, uh, many women became lesbians. And we see a lot of uh, yeah, lesbians uh, among radical feminists. Yeah, and uh, discussions about um, political lesbianism uh, has started uh, in our country and we are publishing Lesbian Revolution by Sheila Jeffries soon this year. So it will have the more Mm, lively discussion about political lesbianism, I expect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, don't forget that if you have a question, we have a few minutes left, um, go ahead and drop it in the Q&A box. Um, there was a question I saw earlier in regards to transgenderism. I think it was in the chat. Uh, about any kind of backlash that you've gotten for opposing uh, gender ideology. Um, there was that case of, I think it was Sukmyong Women's University. Um, and I wonder if uh, feminists have been um, attacked or I think the question said physically attacked actually, but uh, maybe online as well. I think I can answer that. Um, yeah, Korean radical feminist movement has been very vocal about criticism against transgenderism. And uh, as many of you know, uh, last year, some men tried to enter uh, Sungmyung Women's University and women uh, uh, were very vocal about their criticism of this man trying to enter women's university. So he eventually backed down and um, gave up on entering the women's university. So it was a small victory uh, for us last year. But um, since then, uh, but this incident shocked uh, liberal feminist, <laughs> especially in, in universities, because uh, they saw universities as um, you know a place uh, where these liberal ideas can be uh, enforced, uh, implemented. But um, these young women are there to reject. Uh, transgenders, like sexual minorities in their opinion. So they, uh, liberal feminists and scholars, feminist scholars uh, severely uh, criticized radical feminists. They blamed radical feminists for being selfish, for not accepting men into women's universities and yeah, so 
they uh, liberal feminists uh, publicly uh, criticize or, or attack uh, radical feminists online, but they also try to deplatform uh, our lectures uh, at universities or feminist organizations, Jihye and I, I experienced some of that, the deep platform by liberal feminists. Uh, and they, uh, they held many conferences, conferences and events that advocated for accepting transgender males into women's spaces like women's sports uh, and women's universities. Yeah, uh, it's the same uh, uh, the happening in other countries, I think. But um, our um, general female population is very against uh, transgenderism. Yeah, so so uh, we need to. Um, so the liberals are pushing for a new legislation that categorize uh, gender identity as a protective right, uh, one of the rights, and we are trying to stop. Uh, the registration from passing. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking here through the questions and I see a question about the feminist party or the Korean Women's Party. And um, the question is, do feminist activists feel that Korean Feminist Party represents them? Radical呃，公平性主义运动，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃
uh, are the emerging feminist voice in, in those issues. And I think they are trying to uh, reach to a wide gener generations of women. And so I think uh, we can't really like say they are like representing all the radical feminists or women like or not. We can't say that, but um, yeah, but they are uh, trying to reach the women, as I said. Um, okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, I suppose that a lot of women's organizations these are, days are not really focusing on the gender issue, but that's you know, that's um, heartening to hear that they're focusing on sexual exploitation. So thank you. Um, that's all that we have time for today. Uh, sorry, we went a little bit over, but um, thank you everyone who came and the event will be posted. Uh, the video will be posted on the Wolf YouTube channel later. Uh, however, certain parts of the uh, presentations will be edited out for privacy reasons, but the majority of the video will be available online. So thank you so much to all of you who came today and the panelists, thank you so much for sharing what's going on in Korea. We really do appreciate it. Um, you've been a really big inspiration for a lot of women all over the world in your ability to handle these uh, issues and organize together. So thanks again. Yeah. Can I suggest one? Um, yeah, to uh, to represent our thanks to our audience, we will try to answer um, Q and A's thirty seven uh, thirty yeah thirty seven Q and A's. We try to answer all of them, but it cannot be impossible. Then we will share whole our answer list to you. Then we can find the way how to share. The Q&A to our audience. Yeah, so um, to whole sisters, you can write your question at the Q&A section or you can send your questions to my emails. Then we will try to answer back of your questions. I will right now my email address again at the chatting. So then we will try to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just for anyone who didn't see that, it says soulconnect2020 at gmail.com. So send any questions you have there. And then uh, there were questions about social media. Um, so if you have questions about how to contact or follow Korean feminists on social media, then you can ask to that email. So thanks again. Thank you, bye. 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 Have a nice warm winter, bye. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.